Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today we're talking about something very interesting given how quickly this space is evolving. Now we've covered something prior that was called Dream Fusion. Uh, I want to say that this is not the same paper nor the same approach. So let's get into it. Uh, a lot's going on here. So in short, uh, this is a PyTorch implementation of text to 3D model Dream Fusion, powered by the Stable Diffusion text to 2D model. Important distinction. The original papers project is here, which is what we actually covered. So it's inspired by that. Um, this approach is different. So they have a bit of an example here, but first um, there's a bit of a cheeky aside here. So one of the Twitter accounts we follow is part of our aggregator, which automatically signs you up for cool AI tools and gives you a better shot at getting accepted. Um, leave a comment or email us if you want to be involved. So one of these guys we follow, one of these people we follow is Tim Field at Nobis. And about a week ago, he technically tweeted this. Um, it's in the past, obviously. He said, Dream Fusion's built on top of Myth Nerf, open source, and Imogen, Google's closed source DALI competitor. How long before an open source Dream Fusion using Stable Diffusion is released? And here we are today with Mr. Blue, I have no clue who this is, saying a week. And then he just links to this and says, look at this, it happened. Um, so that's what we're covering today. And basically at a high level, what, what is going on here is this is not a pure image to image model. So there's still text involved, but it's similar to the approach used with waifu, the way of the waifu model we looked at and um, pony diffusion. So waif waifu diffusion, pony diffusion. So there's still text going on here. There's still text tuning going on and we'll get into some specifics of that in just a bit. But uh, yeah, the idea is you give it a prompt, it generates an image and then iterates for quite some time uh, and you'll see this when we have a video coming out for the local demo when I run this on an RTX A5000. And eventually it gives you, importantly, a cohesive, perfect mesh, as perfect as you can get, that is texture and surface aware, which is important, and also gives you a texture in the form of a PNG. So ideally, these the outputs of this, um, I've been told, could be used to generate, generate STLs. And that's really cool. So another thing that's been kind of requested uh, over email and kind of in some comments is people want us to get a little bit more technical grokking the algorithms under these models. So uh, for now, I'm going to play this just to show you uh, more of what's kind of going on and what you're left with. So this is a complete 3D model. Um, it's depth aware as well, which is speaking to kind of the surface detail you can generate with this. And yeah, so after quite a bit of time crunching, um, you can give it a prompt and it'll give you a 3D object, which is a, as a nerf. And nerfs are a topic that we really are going to start covering more in depth on this channel because the 3D stuff really relies on them quite heavily. So um, the way at a high level this algorithm works, um, there's a lot of text going on here. They say um, the notable differences are the Imogen model is not publicly available. Um, they're not really saying it here, but it's also heavily safety optimized. So you can't really make pictures of people or anything that Google thinks is dangerous, which is kind of funny. Um, different than Imogen, Stable Diffusion is a latent diffusion model, which diffuses in a latent space instead of the original image space, another important distinction. Therefore, we need to, the loss to propagate back from the VE's encoder, part two, which introduces extra time, cost, and training. And I see, when I say this, I mean, it, it takes hours to train this stuff, um, even on pretty decent GPUs, uh, which is, you know, it's an important thing to think about. So currently, um, 15,000 training steps take about five hours to train on a V100, which is pretty, that's, that's a lot. Um, we use the multi-resolution grid encoder to implement the Nerf backbone. So cool seeing that they just said we're gonna take kind of a pre-built component, use that. And we use the Atom optimizer with an initial learning rate. Um, so that might mean something to some of you, probably doesn't mean a lot to a lot of you. Now, the cool thing, complexity aside, is you can run this on your personal machine. Um, it's gonna be slow. <laughs> if uh, you're struggling, but um, this might be the first P 
piece that we use that we make a, like a full-on guide for um especially with Ubuntu pro being available to everyone for free now which makes uh, a lot of cool stuff possible so um i'll show you sort of a gallery here and what's cool with this is it's it shows things that go well and shows things that uh, arguably don't go very well so at a high level the algorithm um basically you start with a text prompt and a completely random 3d voxel um this is rendered this voxel is then rendered from six different discrete angles then uh each iteration is basically the model saying he's going to stable diffusion and looking at a number of side perspectives and fixed perspectives and asking does it make sense if we see this from this angle and that continues um, there's a bit of noise introduced in every one of those steps and that's how we end up with iterative bits uh, now what i think is pretty cool is they also start to show failure cases here um, so here's a character failure case that's kind of interesting it, i think there's kind of a cool deep um, dreaming kind of a look here because it's you, you can tell that the force perspective is screwing up uh, so Google's model in this case is a bit more um, better equipped but uh, not to say that this isn't impressive so what I think would be interesting is we, we've seen other models that speed up the iterate the iteration process by using image to image as opposed to text to image and um, what I wish they had mentioned, so, so 3D artists um, will probably end up using this. And what's curious is this is closer to an approach of like reverse photogrammetry. So as opposed to having a person taking pictures of an object, you're feeding a model through its own filter that is basically like an AI photogrammetry. Um, with each pass through it being a filter and getting scored with how well it thinks that looks like the text prompt you're trying to get towards. So uh, 3D artists used a lot of discrete angles called front cuts and side cuts. If you Google that, you'll see what that is. And basically, they're discrete angles that they use as a reference when they're designing 3D things. And at a high level, looking at this model, I think the coolest thing is the texture and depth awareness. So there are a lot of other models that can make really cohesive objects, but at the end of the day, don't really do a great job of being aware of what a texture is. So in one of our prior videos um, where they were generating images of cars, um, if, there were, if the reference model from one angle clearly had like fins in the hood, um, the model would have a really hard time understanding that that should be a piece of texture that comes out on the outset. And you can see here that like the pineapple clearly has texture. Uh, this may have been kind of a perfect like it might have been cherry picked, basically. Um, but you can see here that it, it is properly depth aware, and, and that's not just like a smooth fruit uh, that you're looking at. So uh, a really curious bit of code that I thought was cool is you can see that th this is pretty roughly tuned. So the way that these angles are being forced and the, these perspectives are being forced to grant context, a lot of it's happening right here. So you see. Um, this is one. This is basically one of the steps that happens, and you can see that uh, it's forcing stable diffusion in each one of these iterations to look at front, side, back, side, overhead, bottom, and uh, it's just applying this to the reference text, which is initially what's fed in to tell it what you want to look at, and that I think is pretty cool. And it, it, it's there are other models where it's not this cut and dry. Um, this one's more readable also because it's a little bit simpler. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, I would not have been able to sit down and bang this out. So um, the other cool thing that I like is they're really upfront about updates that have happened. And I'm going to try to 3D print some stuff from this model as well, because um, I've read one report that you can pretty cleanly export and pull things into Shaper 3D. Like someone has a workflow for that, which I think is pretty cool. And these are some tests I sent through it um, to see roughly if you if you could have it like design things that were cohesive. And this is a, a breakout of one of the steps. So it, 
luckily there's a lot of random stuff passing through it. Um, but more to come from this with 3D printing stuff down the line. Keep an eye out for the video where I actually install this locally and run on an RTX A5000, maybe a more consumer GPU as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this. Uh, if you liked the audio, it's because we're using this, uh, we're using a real microphone to record, not just a corded uh, white iPhone uh, earbuds with the microphone in that. And yeah, if you have any questions or anything you specifically want us to focus on, let us know. We're going to do some cool, maybe more um, like side hustle business related videos um, today and tomorrow. Hopefully you like those. Uh, and as always, I hope you learned something and have a good rest of your day.